honor and pleasure to welcome you to this roundtable meeting on the control of small arms and light weapons in Nigeria. This meeting today is a testament to the collective resolve of the Nigerian government, international partners, and civil society organizations to confront and overcome the challenges posed by the proliferation of illicit arms within our borders and beyond. Since the establishment of the National Center in May 2021, we have been unwavering in our mandate to secure the nation against the threat posed by unregulated arms flow. Our efforts have been geared towards fostering synergy among line ministries, departments, and agencies, and fortifying partnerships with reputable national and international stakeholders, as well as the civil society organizations. These collaborations are crucial as the complexities of small arms and light weapons proliferation demand a concerted and unified approach. The theme of our roundtable, mapping the landscape of small arms and light weapons proliferation in Nigeria, gaps and opportunities, reflects our commitment to not only understanding the extent of the challenge, but also to identifying and leveraging opportunities for impactful intervention. In collaboration with the Mines Advisory Group, we aim to elevate the discourse on small arms and light weapons management and control and to galvanize broad-based support for our ongoing efforts to ensure an illicit arms-free Nigeria. Our objectives are clear and focused. We seek to enhance collaboration with national and international stakeholders to provide a platform for meaningful interaction and to explore opportunities for capacity building and technical assistance. These objectives align with our strategic goal of eradicating the scourge of illicit arms thereby safeguarding our nation's security and facilitating the socio-economic development that our people rightly deserve. Key future strategies pivotal to this mission include enhancing personnel skills through targeted training in security management and disarmament. We are also planning an advanced information and communications technology setup for a national database of small arms and light weapons to unify and streamline inventory management. Furthermore, our collaboration with stakeholders needs to be strengthened for advocacy and awareness alongside ongoing capacity building initiatives at various levels to ensure we remain at the forefront of small arms and light weapons regulations and practices. A crucial step forward, however, will be the presidential assent to the center's bill, which is anticipated to, be, to provide the legal authority necessary for better operational effectiveness. As we proceed with today's agenda, I urge us all to engage fully in these discussions. I am confident that the outcomes of this roundtable will significantly contribute to the emergence of a more robust institution and actions. I wish to close this welcome address by once again expressing my sincere appreciation to all of you for your commitment to this course. Your presence here is a remarkable demonstration of our shared desire for peace and security. So far, we've had the opportunity to showcase to you what the center has been able to do in the last two and a half years, from a one-man uh, headquarters and management team to the structure that we have today in the country, which is trying as much as possible to permit all the nook and crannies to ensure that the issues of the uh, proliferation of illicit small arms and light weapons is uh, brought to the awareness of the citizenry, thereby enhancing its control and, if possible, total eradication. It is therefore important for us to leverage on our past stakeholders meeting where commitments were made, but unfortunately, we were not able to see some of those commitments through for one reason or the other. I am quite aware of the dynamics of our security environment, both nationally and also internationally. But then, it is important that we stay focused on our commitment to ensure that if we are able to stem the tide of insecurity at the national level, then it reduces also the concerns at the international level. 
Your presence here is a remarkable demonstration of our shared desire for peace and security. It is very important initiative. The ECOWAS Commission, as the national coordinator already highlighted, gave the ECOWAS Convention on Small Arms and Light Weapons, their ammunition and other related materials, as a legally binding instrument that all the member states in the region are supposed to be parties to the, to the instrument. And I would like to disclose to this very important gathering that the Federal Republic of Nigeria is symbolizing the practical demonstration of the political will to be able to implement the key provisions in the convention. The flagship of the ECOWAS's policy on arms transfer is fully embedded in the arms transfer regime within the exemption procedure. Uh, I would like to also say that Nigeria is the only country so far in the region that has actually fully practically institutionalized the end user certification process in all the documentations when the services are importing their arms. And the ECOWAS Commission is taking that initiative as a model. And I would like to put forward and to commend the Office of the National Security Advisor, who is actually uh, the, the hope. That is where the, 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 the central hope where all the end user certificates that are necessary for the documentations of all the imports of arms and ammunition in the country are, are, are provided. And without the end user certificate from the NSS office, none of the services will be able to get the ECOWAS exemption certificate to enable them to import arms and ammunition. So I would like to really, really comment on behalf of the, the Commissioner of Political Affairs, Peace and Security of ECOWAS that Nigeria is putting forward this model and the region through ECOWAS would, is taking it on board to also replicate you know, this same model uh, that will be able to allow other member states to put in place a sustainable framework like the EUC that Nigeria is actually practically uh, putting in place. Uh, I was so elated when I was invited to be here uh, because I, I must say I've been part of this process since 2001 when the very first national committee in Nigeria was put in place. And consistently since 2001, there has been significant efforts in terms of actually fully putting in place you know, the, the required national political will, the required national resources to be able to fight this fight. But I would like to also say what is consistently missing is the need for us to put in place the institutional as well as implementation arrangement. I'm happy the NSA is here and the national coordinator already flagged it up. The need for legislation to be able to allow General Duco to actually fully, effectively continue this excellent work that they are doing. And uh, I'm happy the bill is already before the president, which eventually, as soon as it's signed, is assented to, we'll be able to see that in the region, in all the 15 member states of ECOWAS, it's only Nigeria. It's only Nigeria that is yet to put in place through an act of parliament. But I must say, if it's an institutional implementation arrangement, Nigerian government has demonstrated strong political will to be able to actually accompany this process of implementing the ECOWAS Convention. So I would like to actually commend the government for, for this very, very important uh, support and uh, looking forward you know, towards getting the, the bill that will help to transform you know, the, the, the center into a legally binding, I mean legal, legal institution an institution that is legally covered to be able to, to do that. Uh, the implications of all of this is that 
if the legislation is not in place, like we have seen since 2001, any of the committee will, all, will only last for as long as the regime lasted. And this is not good for sustainability, and this is not, not good for continuity. And I'm happy, I'm fully convinced that the, the present administration is, uh, is dedicated and fully ready to be able to see that Nigeria is, uh, is at it in terms of establishing the National Commission. Uh, the, the, pro, the, the, the promotion of the culture of peace, the General, General Duco already highlighted it, is one of the key fo you know, focal, uh, focal, focal uh, provision in the ECOWAS Convention. The bulging youths we have in the region, we need to continue to sensitize them. We need to also continue to support the need to continuously, on a sustainable basis, promote the culture of peace. I was also elated when General Diko also made mention of uh, marking, the support for marking, the support for tracing, the support for collection and destruction of arms. Nigeria has, uh, has occupied in recent times most of our data. We always consistently provided data to our authority during ECOWAS summit, you know, in terms of the statistics of the numbers of arms that are destroyed. Uh, this is a commendable initiative. This is also uh, being encouraged, not only in Nigeria, but in other member states. Uh, at, this, at this point, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will not end without actually you know, commending our partners. The European, delegation, the European Union delegation has been leveraging a lot of resources, not only to ECOWAS at regional level, but also at individual uh, member states level. The, the, the other partners, GIZ, UNDP, ICRC, a number of them, Halo Trust and, and the likes. These are corporate partners that are always consistent in terms of actually supporting ECOWAS Commission, uh, technically and financially, as well as our member states. So I would really, really want to commend uh, these efforts and to also continue to solicit for the continuity of these efforts you know, by, 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 by our partners. Uh, at this point, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish you the best of uh, this, this round table discussions, and I'm sure, as always, it will be open, frank, and factual. Z, the UNDP, and the Mines Advisory Group. As you may well know, illicit weapons, which are now even more readily available, threaten electoral processes, weaken police authority, and undermine security efforts to maintain peace in Nigeria. This is particularly worrisome in the face of the rise of criminal activity and violent extremism within this country and around its borders. Armed violence increases public health costs and in many cases the insecurity due to the prevalence of illicit arms drives away sorely needed external investments into the country. In summary, progress on almost all development indices is severely hampered in areas where weapons are poorly regulated, poorly controlled, and poorly managed. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is in response to this threat that the European Union has taken the initiative to support ECOWAS and by extension, its member states, including Nigeria, in implementing the provisions of its Convention on Small Arms and light weapons, and its vision of promoting peace, security, and stability within its member states. A lot of resources are required to finance projects and activities in the fight against the proliferation and illicit circulation of small arms and light weapons, with a view to eliminating them from the countries and communities while promoting development. In 2019, the pilot phase of an earlier intervention in the area of small arms and light weapons, the EU support to small arms and light weapons projects, was succeeded by the ongoing Organized Crime West Africa Response to Trafficking, OQAT program, implemented by the GIZ and the Consortium of Implementing Agencies. With a total budget of 24.4 million euros, this project is part of the regional efforts to combat organized crime and trafficking in persons and arms in West Africa 
by reducing the availability and illicit trafficking of small arms and light weapons at border community level and strengthening cross-border cooperation as well as the capacity of national actors on small arms and light weapons. Broadly speaking, this program aims to strengthen the organizational co capacities of national commissions of small arms and light weapons, or NATCOMs, including the organizers of today's event, which is the Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons. And its objective is to improve public education, civic awareness on small arms proliferation, and improve national commissions and security sector institutions' technical capacities in the field of small arms and light weapons control. Furthermore, through these various support measures, the operational capacities of the NATCOMs and their devolved structures are strengthened to effectively reduce organized cross-border violence and the availability of weapons within communities. Other activities undertaken have included arms marking and provision of related or relevant equipment. These achievements signal some out of the many evidences of the successful partnership between the European Union, the ECOWAS Commission, other development partners, and national or government agencies active in the area of small arms and light weapons control. Today's meeting further offers to the EU delegation, in partnership with other key stakeholders, an opportunity to better understand the strategy of the National Center towards the prevention and control of small arms and light weapons within Nigeria, and to look into even further opportunities to engage in this area in the future. It would also be useful for us, together with partners, to understand the Center's role in effectively coordinating support towards achieving its noble objective for the significant reduction in the proliferation of illicit small arms and light weapons within Nigeria and is trafficking into and from its borders. To conclude my remarks, I would like to thank the organizers and participants of today's event for the spirit of collaboration that should facilitate a joint approach towards addressing the proliferation of arms within Nigeria. Of small arms and light weapons organized by the Halo Trust over here. Um, looking at the threat of advanced conventional weapons and private military groups. We had some very good and honest discussions about uh, the flow of illicit weapons and their origin and how to deal with them. And uh, some of those present yesterday are here today and uh, can attest. One thing that became particularly apparent yesterday is that weapons, just like weather, do not stop at borders. Non-state armed groups strategically operate between different countries to profit from restrictions that governments might have. It is therefore clear that the response to the regional flow of weapons must also be regional. This is why it is highly commendable that the ECOWAS has taken it upon itself to react to this regional problem by drafting the so-called ECOWAS Convention on Small Arms and Light Weapons, their ammunitions and other related materials, and working towards implementing this convention. The German government, together with the European Union, has supported these initiatives with the help of the Mines Advisory Group. It has supported the ECOWAS Commission in improving national and regional framework conditions and structures for combating transnational organized crime and illicit trafficking of, uh, in the ECOWAS region. On a national level, this project has worked with ECOWAS member states in improving national and regional small arms and light weapons control regimes through the operationalization of international agreements such as the UN Program of Action, the Arms Trade Treaty, the UNTOC Firearms Protocol, and of course, the ECOWAS Small Arms Light Weapons Convention. In Nigeria, the project supports the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons and other security agencies in the areas of physical stockpile management with specific interventions such as trainings in weapons and ammunition management, weapons destruction, and the provision of armories as a means of curbing diversions of arms and ammunition into unauthorized hands. As the largest democracy in Africa, Nigeria plays an important role in the stability of the region and the continent. This stability begins at home. 
It begins by equipping Nigeria with the infrastructure and expertise to manage their national stockpiles, to mitigate the risks of diversions, and to establish an accountable and effective security sector. That the government has taken this upon itself shows that Nigeria is committed to reducing the threat posed by the illicit proliferation of small arms and light weapons, improving the safety and security of all Nigerians. Above all, it shows that we can accomplish more when we cooperate with partners and national authorities. I am therefore proud to represent today a government that has supported these efforts. I am deeply impressed by the work of the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons that has taken upon itself a very difficult task that is perhaps even also a dangerous one. However, this task is of highest importance to reducing violent conflicts as well as to reducing transnational organized crime and revenue sources for illicit actors to effects that come with the proliferation of small arms and light weapons. I therefore commend the NCC and the Mine Advisory Group on their work done so far, congratulate them on the organization of this roundtable today, and wish them all the best for their upcoming work. Germany will continue to stand by your side. In the words of our eloquent moderator, let us go far together. Union um, and the um, German Embassy here, presidents and distinguished delegate, ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. I stand to speak on behalf of um, the Aquati project. That so by Aquati, Aquati is organized crime West Africa response to trafficking. It is the umbrella project that houses a, um, a consortium of implementing partners that, uh, that implement activities or interventions around small arms and light weapons control, criminal investigation, research, and also um, and trafficking in persons. But for the purpose of this quorum, of course, um, small arms and life weapons is most important, so I'll dwell mostly on that. So within the context of the Aquati project, so the Aquati project is an ECOWAS project that is um, commissioned by the German um, Federal Foreign Office and, and co-funded by the European Union, implemented and coordinated by GIZ at the regional level together with MAG, implementing in Nigeria, and also uh, UNDP implementing in, um, in the Manu River countries and, um, some, and some, um, some, some Sahel and countries. Since the inception of the Okwati project since um, 2019, at the regional level particularly, we have implemented uh, activities jointly together with ECOWAS to, um, to increase capacity of member states to implement key counter-trafficking provisions of the, um, of the um, ECOWAS Convention on Small Arms and Life Weapons. In that context, we have developed a model guide that provides guidance to member states on requisite um, institutional and operational modalities that should be in place for the implementation of the ECOWAS Convention and also the Arms Trade Treaty, which both documents are binding across um, the region. This document exists and will serve as a veritable guide for all member states, and Nigeria in particular, in establishing um, a, 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 a good legal framework for governance of arms in Nigeria. In that context also, we have developed um, um, re uh, regional operational guidelines on arms brokering and civilian possession and licensing. Just for context, these we have done together with ECOWAS and we have basically co-created this regional operational guide with input from member states. So these guidelines exist, and like I've said prior to now, they will serve as good basis for member states to draw lessons from without necessarily reinventing the wheel because this is, this is an organic document made for the region and by the region and would form a good basis for, for, for strengthening um, small arms and life weapons control. So these are many more we have done to provide guidance to member states on efficient and effective control of small arms and life weapons. At the national level, with the good work of our, of, um, of our implementing agency, MAG, we have been able to do work around also um, um, fiscal stockpile management, including supporting um, arms destruction and also uh, and capacity development training along that line. The hope of all of this, like um, the, the speaker before me had said, is to strengthen regional and also national framework conditions to regulate um, small arms and light weapons, all to make sure that there is peace and stability in the region and also to reduce human suffering by extension. 
I'll stop here, but I would also like to thank very much um, the, ECOWAS, um, the ECOWAS Commission for their guidance and also technical support throughout um, the implementation of this project and for all of the products that have said we have developed, this we have done together with them. I also like to thank the National Center and, and by extension all the members who have, who have dedicated time and also provided their expertise towards developing these regional operational guidelines that, I, that like I said, are, are ready and are available for use by all. Here with you to be here to, with you today at this round table. This event was made possible by the financial support of the European Union, the German Federal Office on the Roquarty Project, but I also want to thank specifically the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Lead Weapons because they contributed some of their own funds to make sure that every participant was very comfortable today. So I thank you for that as well. Okorti, as mentioned, is an ECOWAS project commissioned by the German government, co-funded by the EU, and coordinated by the GIZ. It is a multidimensional initiative to combat transnational organized crime and trafficking in West Africa. Since 2019, MAG has implemented activities under the second component of the project, which um, focuses on strengthening regional and national capacities to reduce the circulation, illicit transfer, and availability of small arms and light weapons. Our key partners in doing so in Nigeria has been the NCC SALW. However, MAG has also implemented this project not only in Nigeria, but also in Togo, Ghana, and Benin. It has been a great privilege to work on this project, and I would like to express my gratitude to the ECOWAS, Small Arms Division, and the GIZ for the outstanding support and coordination efforts they did in, uh, to allow for successful delivery of this project. Excellencies, dear colleagues, today's events represent a significant step in our collective commitment to addressing a matter of great importance to Nigeria. As we know, in contexts such as ours, instability and the associated spread of armed violence is largely enabled and has been fueled by the proliferation of small arms and light weapons. In Nigeria, the proliferation of SALW continue to pose a direct threat to the lives of civilians and communities, but also to the overall prosperity of the state. What I mean by this is that today, in spite of considerable efforts put in place by the state and its security actors, access to resources and basic services remain challenged by armed violence in some areas of the country. Indeed, the access to, the circulation, and the ownership of illegal weapons is enabling some actors to still gain power and resource over others. This inequity is further increasing pre-existing grievances between groups and in turn could generate further conflict. For MAG, Small arms and light weapons are indeed the instruments of violence, but they are not the standalone cause of violence. As such, armed violence should be addressed holistically. This means that securitization efforts should be linked to efforts which seeks to reduce inequalities altogether. By increasing access to services, resource, and infrastructure in an inclusive manner, as well as by promoting a peaceful dialogue and building trust between communities and representatives of the security sector. This is why I believe that today's meeting is of paramount importance. We have a unique platform made of national security actors, government officials, representatives of the international communities, UN agencies, and international non-governmental organizations, all of which have an expertise in either security or the support to vulnerable population. I wish that as an outcome of this discussion, we would be able to better highlight the gaps and opportunities to take into consideration in order to improve SALW's control in Nigeria and therefore contribute to broader human security in the country and more broadly. Major General Dickel, I, I am especially grateful to you for the excellent partnership built over the last few years with the NCCSLW and MAG. Together, we have trained more than 400 security staff on weapons and ammunition management in line with international standards. We have destroyed more than 3,000 weapons. We have also built or rehabilitated 19 key infrastructures all over the countries, including armories. In doing so, we have contributed to ensuring that the flow of weapon is better monitored and that the safe storage of these items follow best international practice. This will significantly lessen the risks of diversion or porching of those dangerous items. A year ago, actually, exactly, um, under the Okwati project, we were together in Kaduna to destroy 2,100 weapons at once. Beyond the training and the capacity development that we normally offer to the center and to its partners, the NSCDC, the NDLEA, the customs, everyone, uh, these events are especially useful because they show to the population a strong message. One message where dangerous items are removed for good from circulation and they will be no longer uh, causing harm to them. So I thank you for those efforts. 
In conclusion, uh, dear colleagues, uh, there remains a persistent requirement to adopt a comprehensive approach aimed at preventing the proliferation of weapons and minimizing the arms they inflict on, on communities. This will require close collaboration with partners such as yourselves, and I trust that this round table will allow for such discussions where we come about together and find solutions in all honest, honesty to this problem that we're facing, but also to celebrate the progress made so far. On the control of small arms and light weapons in Nigeria, it is my honor to address such a distinguished gathering, united by a common resolve to stem the tide of small arms and light weapons proliferation that threatens the fabric of our society. As you convene under the auspices of the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, in collaboration with the Mines Advisory Group, I would like you to be reminded that today's roundtable is not just another meeting. It should be a call for action, a focused interaction that seeks not just to deliberate, but to secure the unwavering commitment of each stakeholder represented here. The National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons stands at a critical juncture where the support and collaboration of all stakeholders are not just beneficial, but essential. The proliferation of small arms and light weapons is a scourge that undermines our security, hampers our progress, and erodes the very foundation of our society. It is a challenge that no single entity can combat alone, hence this round table. This is the second of its kind. At the first round table in 2021, a few commitments were made by some of you on the table today, but unfortunately, not all have been delivered. As we engage in discussions today, let us be guided by the urgency of our mission and the knowledge that the success of the National Center for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons is intrinsically linked to the security and prosperity of our society as a whole. Each perspective shared, each commitment made, and each partnership forged here is a reminder of previous commitments and will serve as a building block towards a robust and resilient framework for small arms and light weapons control. I therefore urge you, esteemed partners, to lend your support wholeheartedly, whether it is through policy advocacy, resource allocation, or operational collaboration, your contribution is a lifeline that will empower the center to achieve its mandates. Let me conclude by extending my deepest appreciation to everyone seated here for your commitment to this course. I'm hoping that after this crucial meeting, we will have set the stage for a future where peace prevails and the threat of small arms and light weapons is but a shadow of the past. Thank you again for coming, and I look forward to the positive outcomes of this round table meeting. Yeah, my name is Laurie Durrell. I'm the representative for Mine Advisory Group. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to ask you a question. The first question is how bad is the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in the society? So for us, uh, we're a non governmental organization, we're a charity. So we're not security actors, we don't have information such as this. The only thing that I know is that the proliferation is impacting communities and societies in Nigeria and in West Africa. And my organization works directly at supporting those people to make sure that they're safer and they're more aware of the risk related to those weapons. Yep. Why is your country and organization participating in the roundtable meeting? So this, orga this roundtable meeting was uh, actually hosted by MAG, my organization, with the NCC SALW. Uh, and it's a project that was funded by the EU and Germany. 
and uh, in partnership with ECOWAS and the GIZ. This is a broader, we have a broader program that covers the entire Gulf of Guinea and many other countries, and Nigeria is one of those key uh, countries. How do we expect that So I think for us at this point in time, it's just to, uh, excellent that we have so many stakeholders together uh, to reflect on the problem at hand and work together because coordination is key. Uh, this was a first good step, and now we're, we've agreed today that every quarter we will meet again to see a, make a work plan, action plan, because it's nice to talk, but I think we're now at the stage where it's time to put actions and clear commitments to what we're going to do, define the strategy for Nigeria.